Hi, my name is Emily, and if you don't know, I studied abroad in Florence for three months, and I made a lot of videos while I was there, which prompted a lot of you guys to reach out and ask me questions about studying abroad, whether it be in Florence or otherwise. So I just made a video about everything I think you need to know about studying abroad, and it will be linked down below. It's more comprehensive, but there are some questions that you guys have asked me that are more specific and... I just want to make sure that I get to answer them. I've tried to message everyone back, but um, just generally in case anyone else has questions, I wanted to answer them. So I have a huge list right here. I'll pop them up on the screen. However, I did not ask permission to reveal who was asking these things. So I am blocking out the names, but just know if you ask a question, um, I know it's you. And if you want to comment down below and say like, yeah, you answered my question or something, that would be great. Um, but yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna spill the tea. I'm sorry for saying that. <laughs> okay, so, um, first question is, would you recommend anywhere else in Italy over Florence? And then, um, another person asked me, they said they're looking into studying in Florence or doing Rome. So I would personally not recommend anywhere else in Italy over Florence just because I'm a little biased. Like it was my home for 12 weeks. I would never pick anywhere else over it. It was amazing. Um, but it really depends on the vibe that you're going for. So Florence is kind of like, it's a big city, but it's very small. So there's a lot of people, there's a lot to do. Um, and it, it kind of has like a big city feel, but it's actually like, I want to say like five miles around. So you can walk everywhere, it's super accessible, and I love it. However, if you go to a place like Rome, for example, um, it's more of like an actual big city, and you have to take like the metro or a taxi everywhere, um, and it's less of like a small town feel. Like in Florence, I like knew the people at my corner store. Um, I would see like my Italian friends on the street and everything. Um, so it was kind of like a more small town feel, but like a big city. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> this is getting very convoluted, but yeah, Rome is a much bigger city. Um, and then there's the other end of the spectrum that is like smaller towns. I met someone who studied in Siena and she really loved it. But I went to Siena and I felt like there was just not as much to do as Florence just because it was a little bit smaller. So do your research, but I think it really just depends on the vibe that you're going for. Okay, so the next section of questions is about housing. Um, if you haven't seen it, I did an apartment tour down below. So if you want to check that out, you can. Um, but this person says, did you opt for slash pay extra for a single room or were you given one randomly? I paid extra for a single room just because... I don't know, you never know what you're going to get with your roommates and um, I knew there would probably be a lot of people living in one small space and I just wanted to have an area that I could go to get away from it. Um, I am more extroverted but I do like my alone time so if you're someone that really values alone time I would probably recommend um, paying the little extra to have a single room um, and because like you never know who you're going to get to live with. My roommate Megan, or my housemate Megan, she got a single room too, even though she did not pay. It was just like luck of the draw. So you could take the gamble or you could pay a little bit extra. So someone else said, hoping my apartment is something like this, but I'm a little nervous about meeting other roommates. I'm going with my best friend and living with her, but other than that, we don't know the other people slash how many people there will be. Any tips for living with other people in a small space? So I, you're actually like one up on me. I didn't know anyone going into this, like at all in my whole program. And um, none of my roommates knew each other when we moved in. So it was a little bit like, not awkward at first, but just like you're kind of feeling everyone out, seeing what they're like. Um, and the thing that kind of broke the ice was we just started doing stuff together. Like none of us wanted to do stuff alone. So we would go to lunch together. Um, we'd like go on excursions together and all that kind of stuff and that just kind of really brought us a lot closer together. Um, of course there's always going to be people that you're not as close with than other people and that's just kind of life. General tips for living with people in a small space is just clean up after yourself and address situations head on if they arise. Like don't be passive aggressive about things. Um, and then like as far as with you and your best friend living together and then having other roommates as well, I would just say really be open with them and like 
sure there's gonna be things that you guys are gonna wanna do alone, but generally I would say invite everyone, like just be open, don't like kind of seclude yourselves from other people. A lot of people were asking about planning weekend trips and I mentioned this a little bit in the video that I just filmed about like everything I think you need to know about studying abroad, but I also might do a separate video because there's honestly so much, but I'm gonna answer these specific questions. So I was wondering if you could make a video about transportation in Italy. Uh, I'm studying abroad in Florence and I've been trying to figure out the cheapest ways to get around and travel to neighboring countries. So transportation is great, I think. Um, you can do the train, which um, you can get an app on your phone. It's the Trenitalia app in Italy um, or Eurorail. And that you can just like pick where you want to go, your times. It's kind of like picking a flight. Um, and then you show up at the train station, get on, and yeah. Okay, I had to change my memory card, so that's why the setup is a little bit different. But um, I was in the middle saying that when we went to Paris, we flew. And we used um, EasyJet and Ryanair separately to have flights there. There was like EasyJet had one way and Ryanair had the other way. And I think there's a website that we went through to find like the cheapest flights. And I'm going to put it down below. But you just have to be careful with those because they have like a lot of extra fees that can sneak up on you. It seems like you travel a lot outside of Italy. Did you mainly go on the weekends? Do you have Friday classes? I did not have Friday classes. I had uh, classes Monday through Thursday. And I only had them until 10 a.m. So I had 10 a.m. on Thursday through um, 9 a.m. on Monday to travel, which was really nice. And most of my roommates had the same situation, which is how we got to travel together, which was really fun. I actually only left Italy twice. I went to Switzerland and Paris. And Switzerland, I took a train. And Paris, I took a flight. And we went to Paris over a long weekend. So during, I think it was our spring break, Tech, I mean, we were there in the summer, but it was like you get two breaks per term. Um, two people asked me about language, so they asked if my classes are in English and if they need to be fluent in Italian um, to go to Florence. So Florence specifically, there's a lot of Americans and most of the Italians there speak English really well. Um, and then my classes, I was at the Florence University of the Arts, which is mostly an American school. I think some Italians go there, but not very many. Um, and they were all in English. Probably, actually I know that this is the most asked question that I got, um, which is really nice of you guys, but a lot of you were saying that you really love my videos and pictures and wanted to know my camera gear. So my camera gear that I use, I vlog and I'm filming on right now, the Canon G7X Mark II. And then uh, for the more like cinematic shots and then for taking photos, I use a Canon T2i Rebel, which is like nine years old. It's really not that great of a camera. Um, and then I have two lenses for that. I have the kit lens that it came with, which I think is 16 to 35. And then I have another lens, which is an 18 to 55 millimeter lens that goes down to a 4.8 f-stop. But I really want a new lens for that camera so bad. Um, it's really nice that you guys think that I must be using a really nice camera, but I really am not. I mean, this vlog camera is really good. Um, and I would definitely recommend. All right, someone said, I know we don't get a food plan with SAI, but I was wondering about how much money you spent on food every week. And also, do you have any tips on how to obtain a visa? So the visa thing, if you are there for less than 90 days, you don't need a visa. But if your um, program goes longer than that, they'll help you set up your visa. And then also about money per week, I would say like 100 to 150 euros a week on food. I ate out majority of the time just because I was living in Italy, so why not? Cheapest place for lunch in Florence. Um, there's one place that had brunch that I really loved that was La Vespe, and I think I got like a full on American brunch for like nine euros, which I thought was great. And then also um, there's a panino shop near the Duomo called Panini Toscani, and it it is amazing and then they think that the focaccia there is six euros and then you can get a slice of pizza for like three euros or something um i'll list down below if i think of any more but those are like my main recommendations how much did it cost total to study abroad excluding the tuition that's honestly so hard to calculate um maybe like best photo spots around europe 
in Florence specifically, obviously near the Ponte Vecchio I love. Um, and then at Piazzale Michelangelo is a really good spot for photos. If you've seen my portrait photography from Florence, I'll link it down below. Um, we took those in a lot of alleyways. Mm, love that place. Um, and then in Paris, there's a park across the bridge from Paris where like most people go to take pictures. That's where the pictures that I took on the steps in front of the Eiffel Tower were. And then um, there's also like a little garden area um, on the same side of the river as the Eiffel Tower. That's like where the rose bushes are. And then like this picture that I took there. I'm sorry if that's a really bad explanation, but hopefully it'll give you a little bit of an idea. Best memories. That is a very nice question to ask. Thank you for asking that. Um, my... I have so many, but so my favorite memory, I think, was um, when we went on our Vespa tour. It was just, it was our second week, and it was just so, like, everything I had imagined it. And um, that's when my roommates and I became, like, closer friends. And then also, I met um, an Italian friend through doing that. He was our Vespa tour driver, and that was really cool to, like, get to know a local. Um, actually, someone asked me how to communicate with locals. And this will be different everywhere that you go, but in Florence, most people speak English. I would recommend making friends with your tour guides if you go on any tours because, like, they know the city, obviously, and they're good at, like, communicating in English, um, and they can help you, like, communicate with other people. Like, one of my friends that lives in Florence, he introduced us to some of his friends that live in Florence, so we got to know a little bit more of the locals. Um, but for the most part, I'd say that you'll be surrounded mostly by other people at your school and for me that was mostly Americans like I didn't really get to interact with a lot of Italians except for like my tour guides and then people at restaurants which I'm kind of sad about um, I would love to have gotten to interact more with the locals which maybe when I go back one day I'll get to do what did you do cell phone wise like did you get an international plan or switch sim cards so I actually have Sprint which is really awesome because they have unlimited data um, unlimited international data and I was able to use my phone I didn't have to do anything you can also get a Vodafone sim card whenever you get there and um, you can go to the Vodafone stores near the Duomo and they can set it up for you if your phone has a sim card my phone has no sim card so I don't know it just worked <laughs> All right, so this is going to be our last question. Before I answer it, I want to say if you found anything in this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if I answered your question, also give it a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. And then um, also comment down below if you have any additional questions or have any answers to these questions. And yeah, so let's get into the final question. It's a little bit more serious, so we're going to be ending on a serious note. Um, they say, I tend to get homesick really easily, and I was originally planning on going for the entire summer. But now I'm second guessing myself. Any advice or thoughts? Honestly, I feel like we all get homesick. I've lived in a lot of different places away from home for like a lot of summers. And every single time there's an adjustment period where I'm like second guessing my decision or I just feel like out of place. Um, but in my experience, once you get past that wall, like the place that you're living becomes your second home and you start to fall in love with it. That could just be me though. Um, you really need to set realistic expectations for yourself. Take it slow. Like if you are panicking about going for 12 weeks, maybe you scale it back, go for three weeks. I know SEI has a three week program. And then maybe the next summer you could go for a month or the whole time and just kind of work your way up. I would definitely not recommend like jumping into something if you feel like you're going to be miserable because there's nothing worse than being away from home and feeling like like you don't want to be there, especially if you're in a place that you've dreamt about, you know? I don't know if that made sense, but I hope that helped. Um, like I said, guys, if you have any additional questions, let me know. That's all for this video. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.